So, so now, are, are we in the discussion room now? Yes. Uh, no, not yet. We are uh, live on the Q and A. Uh, so we will, yeah, wait ten or fifteen seconds to make sure that uh, everyone has switched to the Q and A. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we have no question yet, uh, but I can ask you some. So the so first one is very general. So how widespread are data flow program like programming language? Uh, how much they are used on? Yeah. So, so is the question, uh, what is data flow programming language? Uh, how widespread uh, are they? Oh, widespread data flow programming language. So there are actually many names that people can feel very familiar with. If you're familiar with a hardware design, you must know Verilog or VHDL. All of them are data flow programming language. And if you're familiar with machine learning, TensorFlow libraries are actually designed based on data flow programming language. And in a little bit early time, if you work on those uh, critical software system, like, you know, uh, airplanes, uh, power plants, they're written in language like a lustry. That's also data flow programming language. Uh, so there is a, uh, one question from Miha Cohen. Uh, can you say optimization? Yeah, yeah. So I want to second first Myra's comment. That is a very challenging problem because of parallelism in data flow programming language. So uh, uh, fault, uh, fault localization for data flow programming language kind of rely on some specific domain knowledge for the language you are working on. For example, in Verilog and VHDL, though the parallelism brings a lot of challenge, but they have other extra information provided to programmers. For example, there's something called NetList. So this is sort of like an intermediate data generated when you simulate your program, where it shows you all the connections of your component. So in that case, instead of those traditional spectrum based localization, we can rely on the hardware connections between different components. So you can track the, for example, faulty output all the way back to the internal of your circuit, for example, so you can locate which which, you know, which wire is actually relevant to the fault. Maybe Hamad jumping anytime. <laughs> and that sounds about right. Just backtracking from uh, your, your final output and then just tracing, trying to implicate what uh, parts of the circuit, is specifically for Verilog, uh, what part of the circuit uh, is implicated by faulty output. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, no many more, common, many more questions in the chat. One from Bill Langdon, how common are uh, errors in data flow programs uh, versus in imperative programs? Um, uh, uh, yeah, so, so for this question, so it depends on the, the size of the program. Um, because the data flow program can be very different from imperative language, there can be like a hard direct comparison that's just using, let's say, lines of code, for example. But what we can say is errors are pretty common in data flow program, and it can lead to actually more expensive uh, consequences when there's a defect. Just to think about like a hardware design, Intel chips, or those power plants. So uh, yes, they are pretty common. And so far, we know the current state of the art, there's really no effective way to uh, fix those errors like uh, with uh, less human effort. Uh, so remaining on a previous presentation from Bobby Bruce, do you believe that you will need a new type of uh, edit operator to deal with uh, data flow programming languages? Oh, that's a great question, like uh, mutation deletion. Um, so we're actually working on a prototype right now, Hamad may have more to say about that. So, so far we are still applying, you know, those traditional GI APR operators, but that's a great idea. Mm, I guess based on, you know, like a special grammars used in the data flow program language you're working on, new code edit operator can be very, uh, you know, useful. Yeah, yeah uh, on the same line, uh, more, I would say more uh, comment than the question. Uh, after the one of Bobby Bruce, uh, it might be uh, data specific. So a new type of operator that uh, tied more to data. Wait, so, quick. Sorry, I, I, I think I have my internet lost a bit. Come on, do you want to jump in this or? So, uh, well, so I guess uh, there wasn't as much of a question as a suggestion that like this kind of a new uh, 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 code edit operator could be, could be data specific. Instead oh. of code specific, was that was that the suggestion here? 
question. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point because the the point of data flow programming language is we focus on the flow of the data instead of right. the, the operational instructions. Yeah, I totally right. agree. This basic operation. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, one question from me: uh, What is the cost of evaluation uh, uh, versus uh, symbolic execution, for example? Sim, sorry, sim, symbolic, symbolic execution. Yeah. yeah, sorry, so what about symbolic execution? Um, so the cost of uh, evaluating uh, the new program rather than uh, using symbolic execution to find the difference. Oh, I I think that's also a great Great, great idea. So, so you're you're asking. Sorry, I still couldn't hear the, the the entire question. You're asking about how about using symbolic execution for data flow programming languages, right? Yeah. How does it compare? Yeah. In terms of cost or? Yeah, actually, uh, data flow programming language and imperative uh, languages they share uh, a lot of things in common on the grammar level. Like uh, they can look similar. It's just the way they are like uh, um, uh, executed is different. So definitely, those things that can work on like a C, C plus plus source code can also be applied to data flow programming languages. Uh, maybe with some, you know, uh, new creations there. But the concept, I think, they match there. <laughs> so we have thirty seconds for a very last question. Uh, from Bill Longdon, is there any time between uh, tie between re uh, chemical reaction to so the last talk on data flow programs? Yeah. By the way, I'm already caught, so I don't know you guys. Um, I, I think we're still uh, live. Um, okay. Uh, so, is there any time chemical uh, um Potentially, maybe Hongyu wants to jump in on this. We were cut off from the last talk, so I didn't really get to see most of uh, last talk. So I wouldn't know if there is a direct. Uh,